Hello and welcome to the fourth and final episode of this video series where we're building this lovely little book stand thing. So in this episode, we're adding the final touches such as the little shelf on the bottom here, the arm on the back and adding the hardware to make it fully functional. We'll also do a bit of sanding and planing and all that boring stuff. So let's go. So in the last episode, we got all of the joints fitted, glued and all that. We got this bridle hinge joint sort of thing attached to the back with the ends rounded over. Got the holes drilled for the wing nut hardware and all that. So the first thing we're going to do is plane it all flush and then I'll get the leg stand fitted in the second part of the video. So where are we gonna go for this? I don't know. Right, I've chosen to clamp this in the leg vise because most of you will have some sort of quick release vise or something like that. So all I've done is clamped it on the little nub things that we've attached to the back and that has made it you know, nice and secure in there, let's just say. So even though we marked all of our joints referencing from the face sides and edges, inevitably there are still small steps here and there, but not too much. So all I'm gonna do is plane those down. I've got a number four here. And one thing to look out for here is if you're planing something flush, be careful that you don't break off the side grain of these upright components. So if I was going along here and the blade catches this edge, it's gonna punch that out. A way to counteract that is to skew the plane slightly so that it shears a cut off the edge here and off the edge here as well, so you're not gonna get any bad breakout. And obviously the other thing to do here is make sure you actually have a sharp plane. Cool, right, that one's done. Right, word of warning, do not clamp it along there because <laughs> I just broke it off, so it's all right. I, I can glue it back in place, but I'll wait for that to dry and um, work out a new clamping method. Right, so I've decided that part of the reason for that break is because obviously I was planing out here and it just skewed it. Too much stress on that joint. So I've clamped it down either side now and that is not providing any movement. That's what I should have done in the first place, but oh well. So that's drying at the moment, but because I want to get this video done, I'm just gonna carry on. Okay, so that side's all nice and flush now. So you see I was skewing the plane as I was going through just to make sure I don't break off any of those inside faces. So how am I gonna do this now while that is drying? Ha ha, it's the first time I've used the split top function of the workbench, I'm so excited. So the joints are nice and flush on this face. You might get a little bit of fluffiness on these cross grain bits here where you're planing across like that. But as long as the joint is flush for the time being, that'll be fine, you can sand that out. But obviously you don't want that to be too bad. I mean, of course I'm saying that within reason. You don't want like loads of chunks being ripped out of here. Just a little bit of fluffiness compared to the smoothness of the long grain here. All right, and then I'll just plane off these marks that I drew on with pen. I'm having to go from this direction because the grain is going up like this so if you think of it like a cat or something like that you can only stroke it one way if you go the other way it's going to come up and claw your face off um, i did a video on grain orientation which was my video how to reduce tear out so the link for that is in this corner up here have a look at that so that'll explain grain direction very important if you want to get a nice clean cut in wood with a plane or a planer thicknesser you know it's a universal law that you should know Right, and then on these ends, I've just got the little glue bits that I'm gonna break off first so they don't gum up my plane. Get a nice sharp plane and obviously just straight across like that. And just keep nice even pressure for this because you don't wanna start planing a taper into this. There you go, that is all that needed. Actually, I've got a few small scratches here. Let's all see if I can get them out. Like I said in the last video, it's always worth getting rid of these little bits in pine because if I'm gonna chuck a stain on this, or I say if, when I chuck a stain on this, it's gonna be really apparent on those little rough areas that I haven't quite sanded or finished to the standard that it should be. Right, and with that pretty much all planed flush, the next thing we can think about is the shelf on the bottom that the book sits on. So this frame is 450 millimeters long. I don't want the, um, is it the plinth? I don't really know what it is. The little thing at the bottom, I don't want that to be the full length because it'll look a little bit weird. I want a small offset there, probably about 10, 15 millimeters or so. 
Let's cut this component here to 430. So I've shot this end nice and square with my plane on the shooting board. So that's now a reliable point to measure from. And that's 430 there. <laughs> Right, and there we go. So that would just be a standard square one, obviously, but I'm gonna put a nice little round over on that to match the thing that's going on the back here. So to do that, get my dividers back out. So what you can do here is get two components together like that, set your dividers to the width of one of the components like that, and then press both of them together. Come in from the corner of the plinth and put a little stab mark on the opposite component so you're not damaging the inside face of this. And then you can just simply scratch a radius on like that. So I'll do the same on the opposite end now. That's a lot of material to remove there. So firstly, I'm going to chop it off on my shooting board here. And the other way you can do these radiuses, if you don't have a rasp or something like that, you can just do them on the shooting board like this and just rotate the component as you go. And you're going to start trimming that end grain down and make it nice and square. It takes a little bit longer and probably isn't quite as fun but that is another good way of doing it. Right, and then I'll just clean up the front edge because it's looking a little bit hairy at the moment. I've also got a tiny pocket of sap there. And then before I join it to the back, I just need to make sure that the back of the component is actually square to the face which it is, so that's good. I'm just gonna do one pass of the plane to make sure that there isn't any small undulations in that which are gonna create a gap at the end of it. Cool, right, that'll be ready to join. And the other thing to do is that I can just sort out these faces with a plane first as well, because they're gonna be a little bit difficult to get access to if we try and sand it later. Felt like I was going against the grain then, so let's try it the other way. That's better. Yeah, that was definitely against the grain then. Cool, right, there we go. And we'll just get rid of those marks with the sandpaper, keeping it nice and square as we go. So I'm wrapping this around a block. Right, and then before I stick this onto the bottom of the frame, I'm gonna get the back completely sanded because obviously it's gonna be difficult to lay it flat after I've got this thing stuck on it. So best to do that now. In fact, I'll probably just go over the entire frame before. Yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna do the entire frame before gluing this on. And then while this is drying, I can get working on fitting the arm thing for the back. Still haven't decided the name for it. The leg, that's what we're gonna call it, the leg. But yeah, nothing fun about sanding. I might time-lapse this. I might just cut the camera. All I know is that I'm definitely going to be investing in a random orbit at some point in the future. Right, so um, as you may or may not be able to tell, I have been sanding for quite a while. The components are now sanded down to 180 grit. I started off with 120, so that's a nice sort of general purpose one, probably as high as you need to go for pine. So now I'm gonna get the little plinth standy thing, whatever it is, glued to the bottom. I'm just gonna do that with tight bond. Use very, where have I put it? Ah, so use very minimal amounts of glue for this. You don't want too much squeeze out because it's going to be a bit difficult to clean up afterwards. Also, just make sure you've wiped off as much dust from that glue joint as you can because even if I've done that by hand, there's still a little bit coming off. So just be very careful with that because that may weaken the glue joint. And then to make sure I get this nice and central on that bottom section, I'm going to mark in 10 millimetres from each side. So I'm just going to do a tiny pencil mark above where the shelf is going to sit because I don't really want to be gluing over that pencil mark because one, I'm going to hide it. And also if it's a little bit exposed to be like, God, there's so much dust coming out of my hair. That's not even a surprise. But if there's a tiny pencil mark like poking out from the corner of this, then it's going to be difficult to remove with sandpaper. So make sure it's out of the way of the shelf. And also I'm going to mark five millimetres up from the bottom because I don't want this flush on the bottom of the frame again just provides a little shadow gap underneath it and here I'm not going to put it in the immediate vicinity of the shelf either I'm going to keep it a little bit clear just so I have some rough guidelines that I can work to so now I can see that it's going to be lined up with that top one and the bottom one there even though it's not touching it and that top one and bottom one there lovely right 
Let's get some glue on it. A tiny bit of glue on the back of this shelf. The glue is going to be the only fixing that I need on here because it does create quite a strong joint. Um, you could use dowels here as well if you wanted, but every time I've made this project, this has been just fine. So a very thin bead all the way along there and spread it nice and even. And a good glue to use for this would be Type Bond 2. At the moment I'm using Type Bond 3, but Type Bond 2 has a slightly stronger tack on it, so when you put these components together, it's less likely to slip in the clamps. Type Bond 3 is going to have a little bit more water resistance to it and a little bit more durability or something like that. But this is an application where I think Type Bond 2 would be quite good. Or one of their other ones like Quick and Thick or something like that. It's inevitably going to slide around a little bit, but the less I had to clear up at the end, the better. I think that is as good as I'm going to get it. So we'll do the middle one first. I'm just going to pinch this with my fingers to make sure it doesn't slip. Ooh, that probably wasn't a good idea. So we're getting tiny amounts of squeeze out at the moment, but nothing too drastic. And what I'll do is I'll wait for the glue to sort of get a little bit gummy, and then I can just get that out with a chisel afterwards. All right, that's looking good on there. I might as well get a few more on. And then just to make sure I haven't done anything too wacky to it, I can get a square in there and make sure that the shelf is still sitting square to the frame. Cool, so um, while we're waiting for that to dry, we'll get working on the leg, the leg for the back of it. And so here I've got the frame stationed right next to me, so I can literally take one shaving, check it, one shaving, check it. And then you're not gonna get too lazy, like, oh, I'll just take two off this time and check it all the way over there. You know, if you've got it to hand like this, it's gonna be a lot easier to fit. So I'm gonna take one shaving off this face and clean it up, and then I'll start working on the opposite one. Okay, maybe two, that wasn't a full shaving. Right, before I start thicknessing the other side, let's just check it. No, it's all fine still. So, start working on the rough side. And we do want this to be a very snug fit because when we put the wing nut on there, if it's too loose, then it's gonna start pulling these little arms in and it's gonna snap them off. So there we go, that is going in and it's a pretty good fit in there. So now let's get some washers and stuff on it and see how that clamps up. Lovely. So if you make it a nice tight fit like that, you really don't need too much pressure with that wing nut to lock it down. So good, right. So I'll wait for this to dry and then we can cut this to length, maybe put a small profile on the bottom or something like that and then apply a finish. So now the Type Bond's been left to dry for about 20 minutes, half hour or so. This workshop's quite cold, so it's drying a little bit slowly, but what I can do now is, because it's still a little bit gummy, but a little bit dry, you can just get in there with a sharp chisel and peel off that excess. This is a good way of doing it, rather than wipe it down with water while it's wet and then spreading the glue everywhere and possibly affecting your finish. Just let the tiny bees like this dry for about half hour or so and then pop them off with a chisel. Frame is all together, looking pretty good, I reckon. So, last thing we need to do is attach this to the back. Now, I'm not entirely sure what length to cut this to. I'm sure there's some sort of trigonometry sort of thing that you could work out, but basically what I'm going to do is just cut off maybe an inch to start with, see how that sits, and then just take it off on 10 millimeter increments from there, probably not all the way up here, but you know, take off small increments here and there, shoot it on the shooting board and see what it looks like. I mean, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter if you don't get it spot on because you've got so much adjustment in this as it is, you know, get it thereabouts and you'll be fine. So let's take off an inch to start with. I reckon we could do a bit more than that. The other thing I need to account for is the little round over I'm going to put on the bottom of here. So if it's not quite there, then it doesn't matter because I'll just take that material off and that's going to lower it slightly. Um, uh, maybe a bit more. Yep, you know what? I think that'll be pretty good. By the time I remove material on there, that's going to put it at a nice pitch, I think. So for this, I'm going to do exactly as I did with the outside curves on this little shelf thing on the bottom. So get a scrap bit of material next to it, set your dividers to the width of the component. So I'm going to go in from one corner, stab onto the opposite component just in a little bit, hold it in place, and then I can smash a small radius on the opposite component without damaging it. There you go. 
a variable angle book stand. Works all right that, doesn't it? One thing you could do is maybe get a threaded bar and stick two wing nuts either side so you can tighten them against each other. I've got a Phillips head on the front of here, which you can sort of hold down with your thumb and tighten up the wing nut, but two wing nuts would be better for this. But there we go. Right, so to finish this frame, I've decided that I want to apply a stain to this. Now, a lot of you I know are going to say, Matt, why have you done that? It looks so much nicer when it's pale. In all honesty, I have never actually stained a project in my life. Generally, I much prefer the look of natural wood, and if I want it to be darker, I will use a wood that is darker. But for this, I thought I'd try something different, see how it looks, especially as this is just standard timber you get from a DIY supplier. No harm in trying something like that, is there? And also, if it looks absolutely rubbish at the end, you know not to do it yourself. So I have no gloves to do this, um, so it's going to look like I've just punched a chocolate cake or something like that by the time I'm finished, but oh well. The stain I'm using here is Liberon Dark Oak Spirit Wood Dye. I've done a few samples of this and they look pretty good. It's nothing too drastic, just a nice little browny colour. I think it actually matches the colour of walnut more so than the Liberon Walnut Wood Stain does, which is kind of weird. Hello? The phone always rings at the most inconvenient of times. So I'm just going to give this a once over and check there's no sort of marks on here that are going to be trapped under that stain or going to affect the finish. It's all pretty good. Just got a few little ones there, probably just greasy finger marks or something like that. But I've gone over this frame so much, it shouldn't really matter. Keep the lid on there tightly, give it a shake, make sure it's nice and mixed. I'm going to start with the leg, I reckon. Looks pretty nice, I reckon. So I'm just wiping off all that excess stuff so it doesn't pool or look it too dirty on there or anything like that. God, I am not getting this off my hands. I feel like I'm going to regret this quite considerably. Hmm. I think I should have listened to my own advice there. I don't really like how this looks. Kind of looks like it's just been dipped in a septic tank and then wiped down, but oh well, if you like that look, then go ahead. But that is how you make a book stand from nothing but the cheap materials and hardware available from your local DIY merchant. Costs pretty much nothing to make. You can do it in one weekend and you've got a nice little present to give to someone. So if you go ahead and make this project yourself, uh, chuck it on Instagram or send it to me via Facebook, email or whatever. I'd love to see how they turn out for you guys. And I'll also post a few of them on my Facebook page as well. Call it graduates or whatever it is of the um, book stand series. But yeah, best of luck with it. Chuck any comments and questions below. See you in the next video.